We just prayed for the cameraman's wife, Sister Sue here. People need to see the prophets in action. Too much deadness in the church. Too much cut and dry for me. I left that many years ago. I have a young prophet. I want, I want him to come up here. Where's the microphone? He's 11 years old. He's going to be the first. He raised his hand first. He's 11. Well, I got like seven words. And those words were, the places that were damaged will heal. Thank you. Who else? Seven words. Nobody else got anything? Okay, we'll go on. Go right ahead to your dad. Y'all got to move profits. We're, we're on camera. We're charged fifty dollars an hour to be on camera. Right? <laughs> Clifton, how much you charging back there? Well, Clifton, are fifty dollars an hour. All right, now we're gonna charge you twenty five dollars for opening the camera if you don't if you don't operate it right. You, okay, you're gonna put a profit here. You're gonna put it on my tab, aren't you? <laughs> I uh, what the Lord showed me, I saw his hand on her hip, and he was. Uh, uh, rubbing in some cream and you said the bomb and I said I thought that was interesting but I saw the Lord's hand rubbing some cream into her hip that is absolutely correct come on y'all get up here uh, I heard a baby baby her her uh, no lifting until a few days and I seen some bruising in the muscle area there and that I've just not been lifting up a lot. It's just common sense, you know, but to baby it. When you speak, get in that mic. I got a strong mic here today. Let me see that mic just a minute. See how strong that thing Thank you, Jesus. That's muffled. Did you know that? I saw the word inflammation and healing. The guy was going to heal it. Head to the blind prophet. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Always keep it. Always, I want you prophets to move a little faster. Yes. Like 10,000 miles an hour. I saw the glory of God glowing in her as she has been suffering. The glory is getting bigger and bigger in her. Praise God. Amen. We're going to pray for Irma now. What do you want to pray about, sweetie, your body? Just about this week. Well, okay. Um, she has a lot going on this week, a lot going on every week. We know we've got we've got a stomach blockage here, and we've got a blockage in the ascending colon. colon. We have some problems with the lungs. We have some coughing going on. Now, I want everybody to tune in. Yes, Lord. Father, healing. Jesus. In the abdomen area, the, the, the all the intestines, the ascended colon, remove that blockage. It'll be clear as a bell in her bowels. And healing in those lungs. But this cough would be well. Yes, Lord. Completely gone. Completely gone. One hundred percent. Hallelujah. I rebuke these afflictions in Jesus' name. And I command a healing in this body. Check it one two. Check it one two. Hallelujah. Well, I got five words. The blockage will be clear. Oh my God! Yeah, Somebody shout! Hallelujah! fly in and land on her head. One wing had written on it, strength. 
And the other way to have our is health. Strength and health. Thank you. I saw all the things that were in here was, that camera right there, was, was, <laughs> was hardening and it was flushing out. It, it became where it was hard and then it just all of a sudden just flushed out. Uh, I heard the word healing and I heard the Lord say, the suffering will not compare to the glory. Yes. I heard the word shrinkage, shrinkage, shrinkage is going to start coming to pass. It's going to start shrinking. Anybody get anything on the coffee? I'm going to pray for the coffee again. We've got to get rid of this coffee. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We know the blockage will be removed, but I pray for healing for this coffee. In Jesus' name, I come yes, to be gone. Yes, Lord. 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 You gotta come, you gotta take command. You gotta command it to leave. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, you shut the camera off till I tell you to shut it back on. Anybody else now? We have a prayer request. Gloria has a prayer request. This is her first visit here. Gloria, what did you just say? Me up in prayer for employment and transportation. All right, now we got it. Thank you, Lord. We have seen more people get jobs. We had a fellow here with one eye. Couldn't see out the other eye. They just gonna let him go. I'm driving a sit down. Would you go probably let somebody go? Was black blind? Yeah. Amen. Ron and I prayed. He went before the judge in Shepherdsville, Kentucky. They kept me. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some of you couldn't get a job for a little. You couldn't get a decent job. You couldn't get a job that really paid you some money. Amen. Peter Lane said to me, he said, well, I I'd like to get out of here still making two dollars a day. I get in the halfway house that makes seven twenty five. I said, Why don't you try to try and make at least a thousand a week? Yeah, amen. Selling cars. I didn't got him a job. I wish everybody in here made about three or four thousand a week. I wonder if I paid them right. But that don't feel as dummy if my people make it. Now, she needs employment, she needs transportation. I may believe God she's going to get it. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Amen. The Bible said, let the prophets speak. Don't sit there and look dumb and stupid. And let the others judge. Do you know what the word judge means in the Greek? I'm going to tell them what it means. Doubt. Doubt. One of these. That's a good doubt. In other words, that discernment working if it's from God or not. Look, most people don't know all that stuff. I would need some the Lord had to show it to me. Y'all ready? Now this is for glory, all the way from way up yonder in Alaska. Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, yes, Lord. touch her touch her, Lord. for healing. Yes. Emotional, yes. mental, yes. Physical, yes. employment, yes. and automobile, and yes. plenty of money in her pocket. Yes, oh God. Take her right to the employment. In the name of Jesus. I don't have many was around. We used to have a lady here. She come up for prayer down at the tent in Shepherdsville, Kentucky, where we held a two month revival. He's looking for work, right? You know what Brother Fish, the prophet, told her? It's at your feet. She went home and picked up the paper or something there. And, huh? Off the floor. Off the floor. And it, had, it, it was over in Indiana at the Census Bureau. Yes, sir. She got the job. He's still there. Yeah. He's still there. 
We had a fellow here that used to play guitar for us and fiddle. Great player, musician, singer. When he came, he didn't know all that stuff. We had to teach him. But anyhow, he came and he lived in Lex he lived in Larksburg, Kentucky. And guess what? Ron Fish saw a light bulb. Is that right? Yes, Did you see a light bulb or not? Can you see anything or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I speak up, probably. All right. Oh, he saw a light bulb. And guess what that guy works? What's the name of that place? Tokor Lighting. Tokor Lighting. <laughs> Have we prayed yet? We did. All right, what's your prophets get? Come on. Look here. He's, he's not ashamed to get up here. He used to wouldn't get in front of a camera. He wouldn't get in front of the church so long. But he's a, he's a prophet at 11 years of age. Praise the Lord. Well, I heard the words, God will make a way. Uh, okay, hand it to Aunt Brenda there. Uh, I kept seeing her getting on a bus, Greyhound, or not the Greyhound, the Tark bus, and then getting off, getting on, and getting on, uh, off. And uh, that is for right now until you, you say, but you'll have a job to where you, it'll be easy access. That's what I heard. Easy access. We should go ride on a motorbike and we get another car. Okay, get, get that boy over there. Red, red headed boy sitting over there. Well, I just saw the word nearby. I don't know, this blind, blind man right here. Folks, we have seen it. Listen to me very close. Yeah. We have seen this proving time after time. All right. Hey, y'all be still over there. Calm down. All right, go ahead. I saw the judge behind his bench in heaven, and he had a stamp in his hand, and he was stamping two pieces of paper, and one said automobile, the other one said employment, and he gave it to one of the ministering spirits who was flying with the answer. Oh, China went down. Thank you, Lord. I say, whoopee! <laughs> we don't have church as usual. If you do, it's something wrong. Something, something. What you get? You get anything? Get down here, buddy. When, when are you going to be able to go back to work? You go back to Wednesday? All right. Get back up and pull them drums again. Now listen, I'm going to tell you something. For you being off with your appendix removed, you're going to play twice as good. We're going to give you a spanking. Now you may think I'm a little crazy, but what was that song you recorded here, Bluegrass Baby? Me and my baby wrote that. Going to go pick up our trailer, mobile home, double wide. See, I got a double wide in the 100 year flood plane. You ain't supposed to have one there. I got it. No wonder. I gave that song that boy to sing, and so help me God, we stood here for eight hours. Is that right, Richard? At least, at least eight hours. He nailed it. It took him a long time, but he nailed it. What did you get, son? Well, I saw her just sitting there, and while she was sitting, she was getting paid. So, and then I saw her like watching. Watching over while she was sitting there. She was watching people get paid while she was just sitting there. Now, I'm sure that somebody in this church, in the right mind, has written all this down, right? <laughs> you expect me to come? They expect me, Gloria. They expect me to come in here and write all these prophecies down. And usually I do. But when it's to y'all as a person, you got to figure it out, write it down. Oh, hello, sister. How are you doing? Well, sister, get up here and preach a little bit. I just, I'll turn around so everybody can see. I'm going to send it to your children. They want to see. Um, I just picture, I'm not a prophet. Get up there where you can see something. You're not a prophet. Well, get up I, and preach it. If I you're just, not a prophet, you got to preach. Immediately, I pictured her in the place, I, I don't know what the name of it is, where Beth used to work. Across the street here. He said nearby, so, oh, Shama. So that must be it. I do, and you sit. And you sit, you make phone calls. 
Well, either it's there or it's where Beth works. I can get her a job. Where's Beth? Beth? What's the name of the place? Beth is the top producer. Yes. Yes. What's the name of the place across the street? Uh, I won't come to you right now. It's right across the street. I see it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Give the Lord a hand. Hey. If you're married, you don't need one. Or if you're married, you don't need one. If you need a husband or wife, please don't try to get somebody else. Okay? That's not, good. That's not, that's not nice. I need prayer on something. You need prayer to get another husband? No, no. 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 Um, I, 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 I got to find out. Which one of my animals is the mess? Well, wait a minute. Turn the camera off. <laughs> we thank you for the Word of God. Yes, Lord. Thy Word is a lamp. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Under our feet. And it's a light unto our path. Yes, Lord. We thank you. And we give you all the praise. Hallelujah. And we give you all the glory. Amen. I hear things that I'm really not, i just heard bits and pieces of it. But the Lord gives me things that are so wonderful. And I say, are you expecting me to preach this? He said, what do you think? Book of Galatians. Now, I've got scriptures and stuff written down, but I've got to depend on the Holy Ghost. I can't depend on my own mental ability, which is not that great. <clears throat> Oh, me. Right. <laughs> but Galatians came to me as we stood here, and I think that would be one of the scriptures, but I don't think we'd ever get to it. I believe it's in Galatians 3. I teach our people to bring notebooks. You got your notebook, sister? You got your pen, sister? You got your Bible, sister? You got your right mind? Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, me. <laughs> now, God has called His people to go deeper and further. Most people are satisfied right where they are. You're not going to uh, get them to move with a gasoline torch very far. They just kind of move over to this spot right here. They have already <clears throat> settled in. They know what church they'll be going to for the next hundred years. Yeah. And you'll never get them out. It is for those kind of people, but God bless you. We're glad you got saved. I hope you are. Hallelujah. <laughs> now we're going we should be able to attract anybody at any time. Because there is, a fellow had a death experience one time, and he went up and Jesus said, he asked Jesus the big question, why are there so many churches? And Jesus said, I have people on different levels. In this church here, we have people on every level. Some are babies. Some are grown up. Very few, but some are. Now, I almost used the whiteboard, but I don't have Debbie here to snatch it out, but I have you. Go and get it. And if I put this on the whiteboard, perhaps we have a little understanding of where I'm going. While he's doing that, in Galatians here, he said, Oh, foolish Galatians. Now, I don't expect to finish this. I'm in Galatians, the third chapter. I don't expect to finish this the next 50 years, to be honest about it. All I can do is talk about it, basically, and give you scripture and let you read and so you'll understand it. Then Brother Fish will definitely come back here Wednesday night and may go further on it, things that I didn't have time to say. I wish I had the whole week to teach this. Four hours at a time. 
Now that's the dilemma I'm in. You and I are not made perfect through the flesh. Amen. That's right. Amen. And many folk in the Christian world are trying to perfect the flesh. You know that right. Amen. The flesh has to be crucified. Amen. Crucifixion. Then it, it has to be put to death and then it has to be buried in the Lord's name, death, and life. Then it will come up in resurrection, life, and power. You put off the old man and you put on the new. You can't put on the new till you put off the old. You can get it all back. You, you can get, get an old hog. You, you, can, you can take them over here in the tub somewhere. And we got a beautiful tub that Irma takes a bath in every single day. And you put that old tub in there and we'll get some. Uh, what about that stuff they usually use on the farm there? Uh, uh, white, 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 no, my soul. Uh, my soul. My soul. Thank you, sir. And we scrub him. We can perfume him. I've got some air in over to the house. I smell that right there. Put your nose right there. Yeah. Smell it. Can you smell anything? <laughs> smell that Aramis? I got some other stuff. The Aramis is the best. And we can perfume him. We need to put some clothes on him. Like short pants or something. And put a red ribbon around his neck. And let him out in the hog pen. That's where the flesh is. You cannot be made perfect through reading a hundred books, going to all these seminars, and have positive thinking. <laughs> what happened, old friend? You think it does? You just like wrong. Now you might be able to make more money in sales. I got two boys that make a lot of money. One makes about a quarter of a million dollars a year. And the other was in the six-figure income, but he made so much money they let him go because the company couldn't keep him. So he's going, he's, he's going, he's going to another company, I guarantee in three to, five, three to five years. In fact, I told him, Tad, Tad, you're 50 years old, you'll be a millionaire, boy. Me, me and my wife have prayed both of these kids into good jobs. I'm not against memorization in scriptures. There's a guy that I've seen him on TV, he can quote almost the whole Bible. And that's good. That'll not perfect you. Sorry. Amen. You can go down here to the Family Christian bookstore and you can buy every book. You can get a truckload of books and read them, and that'll not perfect you. Amen. And I'll tell you a secret. If you get to Mount Zion, by growth or gift, you're going to have to get some flesh crucified. You ain't going to stay there. Now, let's look at this in Galatians. Now, I've got so much to tell you that I feel dumb. And dumb. Old foolish Galatians, who got bewitched you? Now, you've got to remember, this is a Christian group of believers. Now, is it okay to read books? Read as many as you can. Lay off the witchcraft books, Kabbalah, and all that kind of mysticism. But read good books. That's good for you. But when it comes to get rid of sin, you're going to have to do some repenting. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 7, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if Confess our sins. I didn't know I had anything to confess. Come to a prophet's meeting. <laughs> I guarantee you, if you don't know how, you don't think you've done anything wrong with you, and you ain't got no sins, I dare you to be here tonight for a good old time prophet's meeting. 
with the apostles. This is not the run of the mill church. Amen. If I learned to wait on God, rebellion, pride, oh, let, let me get into this perfection thing. Can I talk a little bit more about this perfection thing before we can drive you to try to make perfect through the flesh, okay? Christians can start out with the blood, salvation, the Holy Ghost, taking on the Lord's name, water baptism, doing great. But some dude or somebody in the church, or somebody begins to bring another spirit in and another doctrine. And tells them this is the way they can grow up and this is the way to go. You can grow up in God. Now, I'm not against health food. I take some health herbal, herbal things. In fact, God showed me one in a dream. And I ordered it. Works. How about that? Hmm? I don't know how to make this any plainer than this. The flesh has to be crucified at Calvary. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Amen. You might be a good preacher. You might be a good teacher. And you might have half the book memorized. And still dragging around this stupid, stinking flesh. And if nobody's ever told you what the number one sin is, I'm going to. It's pride. That is the number one thing I've had to deal with in my whole life. And I have seen so many ministers, good ones. I mean, I mean, I'm talking about good ones now. I'm not talking about trash. I'm talking about people that knew the Bible. And when that angel of light gets in there, oh. Let me tell you something. When you get to the place that nobody can ever give you any instruction or tell you anything, you get to the place where you'll never take any more discipline or correction or instruction, you're in a bad place. I don't care how much you know. And you're trying to be perfect through the flesh. And it ain't going to work. You can dot every I, cross every T, every jot and every tittle. You can be the best looking chap that ever walked down the street. Your tie can be all straight. Let me tell you about a vision that Brenda had. And she told us again the other night here in the meeting. And she said, my wife and I were in this chariot. And in the back of the chariot was the rest of you. And we were headed to Mount Zion. That was in the spirit. And she said, it was so vivid, I saw your tie, Brother Brown, and it was blowing in the wind, just like this right here. And we're headed to Mount Zion. You're there. But you bring it down to business now. Yes, sir. There was a fellow who used to be here with us. Brother Fish saw him. Saw him going up the mountain. But pride entered in. He fell off the mountain. He needs our prayers. Needs our love. <sighs> oh foolish Galatians, who hath been with you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Listen. Well, uh, hey, uh, it does put your mind on crucifixion and death. I do you put your mind on the crucified Christ and the resurrected Christ. We're all resurrected. Yeah, I can tell you are. <laughs> we 
we sang all the resurrection songs. We don't sing any songs that's got any death or blood in it. I can tell you all because when I go to your services, you never get on your knees and pray. You never, you never spend any time with God. You're trying to go up and you should be going down. Shout! Hallelujah! I said shout! Hallelujah! That little lady, she had an issue of blood. See, she got down to the low place and got a hold of his, the hem of his garment. You got to get down to the low place. Get a hold of, get a hold of the humility. Get a hold of the love. Being perfected in love. Let us go on into perfection. Hebrews 6 chapter. 1 John 4, 18. Perfect love cast out all cast out fear. I've had a lot of fears in my life. It's because a lot of pride I had to go. I had to take and get it crucified. And then I came up in resurrection power. See, I put off the old man and put on the new man. See, when you plant this old man, listen to me very closely, you can plant that flesh, that determination in the flesh, and it becomes zeal for God. Think about it. Think about it. Did you ever, did you ever pay any attention to Isaiah 1? Uh, what is that? Come now... And let us reason together, saith God. This is, though your sins be as scarlet, what's the rest of them? They shall be white as, white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. He's talking about your sins. How does He change your sin? You know what it says? What's that about? He that forgiveth much and loveth much, or he that loveth much forgiveth. How's that go? He that's been forgiven much, loveth much. Ooh. He that's been forgiven much does what? Much. Loveth much. How's that work? Your sins got converted into snow and wool. Amen. I didn't write the Bible, it's there. Amen. Amen. God took it back behind his back, somewhere around Michael 7 18. I've been there in a while. <laughs> That's all right. Took it, listen, he took your filthy self righteousness and he took your ugly pride and all of this and he took it behind his back. And when it came out, when it came back, it came back with love. Love for God, love for your fellow man. Listen, I am a living example. It's a wonder if I hadn't killed ten people. But you know what? I knew where to go. I knew to go to the cross. Yes. But we took all those songs out of the church. At the cross, at the cross. Well, I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. What, what? The burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my, my son. Why don't you go back to it every now and then? Like every day. You know what Paul said? I, the big I, yeah. die daily. daily. And you know what happens when you die daily? You get resurrected daily. Let me tell you something. The older you get, the keener you ought to get. The sharper you ought to get in the Holy Ghost. Through the blood and the water and the fire. Let me name it this way. Blood, fire, and water. There's so much to... Listen. You, you, you've got to read this on your own. Matthew 19. Then there's another one. This rich young ruler... 
came to Jesus. I've written it down here somewhere. It don't do no good to me about anything. I can't find it. Luke 18, verse 18 through 24. Luke 18, verse 18 through 24. Matthew 19, 16 through 21. This rich young ruler came to Jesus. He said, what, do I, what must I do to inherit, to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, keep the commandments. To, you know, not, not kill, not commit adultery. He said, man, I'm going to tell you something. I kept all these from my youth up. And Jesus did not say he didn't do that. We got one of those perfect people. You got a, they got a perfect. I, I mean, they're perfect. There are some people. They've got it all together. They really. They, 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 I mean, they are smart. But I don't care how smart you are. You got to take that old pride to the cross and get it crucified. Rebellion is as a sin of what? Witchcraft. Thank you. I can't hear you. Witchcraft. witchcraft. Is it? Witchcraft. Which witchcraft? Witchcraft. Thank you. Witchcraft. We don't look at it that way. Are they nobody going to tell me what to do in the church? Oh, we can tell. For me. You don't know the scripture, Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them which have the rule over you. Amen. Because you bring grief to the pastor. I had a lady call me way up yonder somewhere. She said the pastor brought me into his office, him and his wife, and asked me not to play the tambourine anymore. I said, good. Can't keep time. I already knew that. I didn't tell her that. He, but he had a, he told us that when we got new people coming in, you start playing the tambourine, there'll be others playing. Now God in heaven knows we could not use some of the things on Saturday night because some folks were playing the tambourines out of time and we couldn't we didn't put it on the internet. We're not that quite that dumb, you know. And he asked her not to play. I said, What do you think about it? I said, He told you, right? She, she called me to find out. I said, I said, you obey your pastor. That's the word of God. Obey them that have the room. And I quote it to him. Best I could, Hebrews 13, 17. Folks, if we began, if we didn't begin in the flesh, let's not get in the flesh now and think we're perfected by the flesh. How much Bible we can read? How much we can pray? You gotta go to the cross and get that thing out. It's a spiritual cancer force. And God won't lie on his holy mountain. If you got to the holy mountain, I'm gonna tell you something. You, 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 it's a miracle because Psalm 15, Psalm 24, you have to have a clean clean hands and a pure heart. And Psalm 15, read that one. Who shall ascend in the holy hill? He's the walk of the upright. Thank you. Very good, young man. He that walketh uprightly and speaketh the truth in his heart. Lord, show me the pride. Show me the rebellion. This is going to hurt. I don't have to obey my husband, the jerk. If what he's telling you is from the Word of God, you need to get with the program. If he's telling you from... Now listen. Amen. God did not mean for you to be abused and your hair jerked out and kicked around and beat around. Right. Oh, I said, well, where is it out in the love? First Corinthians 7 chapter. <laughs> and you know what Paul plainly spoke? You know what Paul plainly said? He said, Jesus didn't tell you this, but I am. Woo! Oh, oh. Jesus left something for the rest of us to get. Jesus said, except for fornication. Are you with me? But Amen. Paul went ahead and said, <clears throat> if your husband is pleased with you, don't leave him. What happens if he's not pleased? 
get out. He's going to cuss you out, smack your face, get out. I don't believe in that. I do. That stops up this mess going on, you know. You see, why play games with... That's in 1 Corinthians 7, read it. If they're pleased, that means, that means happy to me. That means happy to please them. Well, just go ahead. If they're an unbeliever, just go ahead and, and, and go ahead and serve God. Don't run them off. Don't leave them. Pray for them. We, we can't do this thing in the flesh, folks. I've tried it. Can, can I just tell you from first hand, it doesn't work. I might have to read my notes because I can't remember what I wrote. <clears throat> the only, this, verse 2, this only would I learn of you, received ye by the, the Spirit, by the works of the Lord, by hearing of faith. You are so foolish. Are you so foolish, he said. Having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? So here comes this rich young ruler. I've kept all the commandments. He said, good old boy. Now, dummy. Good boy. Good boy. He kept all the commandments. Now, what are you going to say to a turkey like that? He said, and, and he was he was very prosperous. He had much. Go sell what you have. Give the money to the poor and come and follow me. And the Bible said he went away very sorrowful. He was very grieved and troubled in his spirit. And that's what happens. You tell people, I can't, I've done everything I've ever did. I don't know what else they can do. I've been to this church for 25 years. I'm all right. They baptized me up there in the baptism. I know I'm all right. Yeah. There you are. <laughs> I'm all right. But you don't want to change. You've been that way for 25 years. And you'll stay that way unless you want to change. I want to change. I need to change. I have to change. Change what? From the old man to the new man. Listen, it plainly says in 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 Read your Bible, friend. It plainly says in Act, mm -mm, Romans the sixth chapter, you can plant the old man in his death, and then the resurrection life comes up. Yes. Come now. Let us reason together, though your sins be at, though your sins be as God, if they shall be white as wool. That old sin of hate and pride now becomes love and humility. And you can walk in the Spirit. It's the blood first. You ain't going to go nowhere without the blood. Without the crucifixion. Then here comes the resurrection power. Jesus, Romans the sixth chapter was raised by the glory of the Father. And guess what? You'll be raised by the glory of the Father and you'll walk in newness of life 24-7. First of all, let's see what we're talking about here. Let me move this over so that camera and level in on it. Now, I I didn't know I'd let these children take these things and get all the ink on them. Go about and buy some more, okay, sister? Okay? Uh, well, uh, you do what, sister? The red one there, but we can the blue ones are right. The blue and the black ones are right. We're to yeah, we don't want the children uh, doing this anymore. I just didn't call me at a bad time. I didn't know what was going on. We start out... 
the blood. A house. Exodus 12. Blood going down this way, blood going down this cross. Here's your side post and your doorpost. Might cause sin off the blood, blood, whole burn, burn off the blood, peace off the blood, Exodus 29. Your first experience. God takes you through these experiences constantly. Now, here comes the pillar of cloud and fire. Exodus 13. It's like going from the first grade to second grade to third grade. Here's the cloud and fire. This is the Holy Ghost. We put HG. CL. Cloud and fire. Everybody can see that? Can you see it on camera? Yes. yes. Good. Put it right there at me. Okay, now we got the cloud and fire. You see, here you go down. Here, here it comes. It comes down. You go. You go. You go. You might. You, you get caught up in this. I, I, when I got the Holy Ghost, I was walking around for three days and three nights like I was in a cloud. Then comes the water of the Lord's name, death, and life. Now, with those three things, this is Exodus 14. This all happened in Egypt. Egypt is a picture of the world. We don't have to stay there. We can come on out. Get the house of blood, Holy Ghost cloud, come into the water here, and come over here. And now he called them a son down here. Acts the second chapter. In the wilderness, he called them a church. Acts 7, 38, 39. Okay? He called them, I'm going quickly because I'm going somewhere. And he got over here in the wilderness and he called them a church. And they wandered around for 40 years. Didn't have to do that. People are wandering around for 40 years in the churches. And some of them just die off. You know, they die, go to heaven, that's the end of them. If they don't backslide. And then, here come Jordan River. God had to raise up a new man there by the name of Joshua who was Moses' minister. And he took the people over into Cain, Cain's land. I'll put Cain's land. Can you remember that? Cain's land? You can if you want to. Now, they met the captain of the Lord's host when they came across the river and she became a bride. You have to grow up and mature to become a bride. Who ever heard of a baby being born and getting married? The whole church world practically teaches that. Not long, not long after, it was in 69, I heard a teacher teaching. I only got to hear five minutes because I was late. I was two hours and 55 minutes. I couldn't find a place. But I heard five minutes. Five were wise and five were foolish and they were all asleep. Many of the church people are asleep. But there was a cry made at midnight. Go, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. And they all rose. Those virgins are not the bride. Psalm 45, they follow the bride. The queen of gold of Ophir. Don't get married to your position in Christ. There's people who never grow up in the natural so they really never mar never ready for marriage. You want them to they have they have hell and high water when they get married because they're not mature. Yeah. They think they can blow off to their wife or their husband like they did their mom and daddy. There is no way that some of these kids that I've seen out here on the streets and other places would treat me the way they treat their parents. I wouldn't tolerate it, wouldn't put up with it for five minutes. My kids come into church and they sit down. They only moved if I told them to. Come get me a glass of water. You mean you commanded your children? Yes, I did. Abraham did and I do. Tell me about Genesis 17, 18 chapter. Genesis 18 chapter. Now, so we made the bride now. Everything is hunky dory, right? Oh, we done a ride, right? Away. 1967 is when I received this experience. 1968 is when I received this experience. 
1969 is when I got this one. One, two, three, you think I'm fast? I was slow. I moved like a snail. I was in a church of 120. They didn't want to go on further and get this, the Holy Ghost. So I just kind of crawled out. They didn't want my testimony. Huh? Eh? I was teaching Sunday school. So I crawled out and I come over here to this another church here and got the Holy Ghost in 1968. And then God began to give me things in the Word and I began to share it with the pastor. He said, well, you're all right in the heart, but you're not right in the head. Great man of God. But he wouldn't go further in the Word because his denomination did it. I will not be, I will tell you right now, I will not be controlled by any denomination or divination. Take it for what it's worth. I'm not in one. That's it. If I went back in, would I be, I'd be there to get them out. Hey! <laughs> hey, hey! And so, I come over here, and then I got in this wild and woolly wilderness. Now, from this point right here, from 67, my crossing over Jordan was in 1988. I'm a slow cookie. It took 21 years. Tony, that's not very fast. And one of the things that held me back is that the leadership was not as far as they ought to be. But they were further than most. Where I was, when I went from here to here, I began to advance. I was in this place here, get, get me now, 27 years I spent right here. Called Pokey, Pokey, Pokey. I spent nine months, no, one year altogether. Pastor for three, nine months of that, in that organization. Divination. So this, 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 this fellow went away sorrowful. Do you know how many people come and you begin to tell them the truth? <laughs> My mother won't like it. My kids would want to come to the Hillbilly Church. They like to find steeple up there in town. Well, they got professional people. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, dude. I got a prophetess in the back that teaches these children. Got more word than most of the pastors got. Amen. Don't give me that junk. Amen. If you go to church for any other reason than to get the word of the Spirit, you've gone for the wrong reason. That's right. Huh? Amen. Huh? Yeah, but my grandmother was raised there. Get out. Your grandmother didn't have all the truth. Because there's more truth than came since grandmother was alive. I'm not in the church that my grandfather and grandmother were in. I've done gone and beat them. How did I do it? Going down. Coming down, down, down. Coming down, down, down. The glory of the Lord is coming down. I'll be glory all around. Oh, the saints of God are found. I'll be glad you get ready to sing again. The glory of the Lord will sing next week. The glory of the Lord is coming down. Look at my mind. I'm going to sing. Listen to me. Very close. Got one of them old pains in my side again. Oh, no. she, yeah, she came up in my side here. Oh, no. I had one last week. I got one this week. Yeah. If you think it's funny on the camera, that's okay. Be laugh. You'll love her loving head off. I don't care. You had one the week before. Right? had one the week before. Oh. Now listen. I told him keep the camera rolling because it's what will attract millions, and that's what I like. The more the merrier. I <coughs> worry. Okay. 67 to 1988. Now that's a long time. 
That's 21 years. Did you hear what I said? 21 years. 21 years in the stand when paying. I ain't proud of it, but that's where I've been. 21 years is a mighty long time. But that's what it took to save the soul of mine. Somebody asked me one time, did you spend any time in the pen? <laughs> Surely did. Religious pen. Amen. From 67 to 1988, I wrote my legacy. In 1968, I wrote that song, 21 Years of San Quentin Pen. And from 67 to 88, I spent 21 years in the religious pen. And when I came out, I was a vegetable. Boy, that's a pain. Oh, hey! Get up here and rub that. All right, we've got a massage right on the television. Christian TV has turned upside down. Because Carl Brown is on there with his wife for a while. Somebody shout amen. 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 Hallelujah. Preacher here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Put, put a little pressure on there. I'm trying. I'm not as strong as you are. I know. Anybody want to arm wrestle me after church? <laughs> Okay, sweetie, thank you. I know you're really strong, but... No, nobody else wants to massage. She ain't mas Let me tell you something, sister. She ain't massaging no man in this joint. Amen. I mean, put, put a mark on your hand here. I'll straighten you out. Somebody else needs to massage. You see, that doesn't interrupt me at all. That makes life exciting. Amen. <laughs> 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 I know, I do know how to take a So long. I love it. In 1988, I got my deliverance. Freedom. I am the free, most freedom loving man you probably ever met in your entire life, and so is Jesus. Now you notice it was all the way up to the cross before he shut his mouth. He was telling the hypocrites, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, anybody that come to him, he was teaching them. But when he came to the cross, he just shut his mouth and came like a lamb. Sometimes it's time to be a lamb, and sometimes it's time to be a lion. And you'll never become a lion until you let God produce the lamb in you. This is Canaan's land. All through here, God has been working on us. Mount Zion. What sets on Mount Zion? New city. New, city. New Jerusalem coming down from God yes. out of heaven. Yes. Revelation 21, Revelation 22. You're getting this. Gloria, what God has, I have sent under three basic ministries. This ministry right here, Gloria, from 19, what year am I at? Uh, 69 to 88, it's full of the Word. Full of a lot of other things, but it's also full of the Word. And I nailed it. I got a hold of it. And I ran with it. I'm slow. I'm slow. It took me, took me 21 years to cross the Jordan River. And from 1988 to 2010, God gave me a dream and showed me on Mount Zion. And I saw a path about like that. It was a snowy path. Abraham had went down to Isaac, Jacob. Paul, Peter, I don't know if anybody has in this generation. I haven't met them. Maybe they have. The path was beaten down. That was
was 22 years later. Now, how many years have we got in this thing now, Richard? You started in 67? Mm hmm. Up till now? Mm hmm. It's a trick question. 45 years. Because this is 2012. Yeah. Now, that's like 45 years. That's what I said. <laughs> okay. But it took 22 years from 88 to 2010. Now, I made a statement long ago. If someone's gone ahead of you and gone beyond, follow them. Whoever they be, follow them. And God will take you to that place. Now, and when it comes time for you to go further, God will raise you up someone else you can follow. Up until 88, I had followed somebody else. I followed somebody else for 21 years. And then when I came out of this place right here, I was praying in my office in my house. And I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to teach, and I don't know what to preach. And he began to speak to me, who saved you, who filled you with the Holy Ghost, who led you through these churches, who led you through all this, and I said, you did. And then he said, who's going to lead you now? I said, you are, Lord, but I don't know the way. I crawled around like a little baby, like a lamb. And one by one, a prophet... A young man came to our church. He said, God is going to show you what to preach. Another fellow came and said, God's going to lead you directly. In fact, one that said to lead you directly, that was the father of the son who said, God's going to show you what to preach. But it was in 69 when a person stood in the pulpit and said these words. I was going to be like a city suddenly healed. I will tell you something, folks. You, you can't you can't have pride there. You gotta become very small and just let the Lord flow through you. Just about everyone in this room is called to that place. And if you want to be called, you can be called. And what are we talking about? I'm gonna read a few things to you, and then we're gonna go home. But those are the bank, sweetie, would you? Now if I don't show you what we're talking about. Because when you get here, a lot of those stuff has got to go. See, God carried the whole church now either by gift or growth. When we arrive at Mount Zion, I have to read because I can't remember. We'll either get humble and humble out of attitude or else in this high, a high and holy God will not allow pride and rebellion. The good example or bad example is Lucifer in yes. Ezekiel 28 where he failed because of his pride. Am I right? Amen. Amen. I wrote that down. Didn't I? There are many times that we need a little help, a little, a little prayer, counsel, and God will give it to us. But the, the attitude that you want to have is like a newborn babe. The Bible says as newborn babe is out of the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. The Bible says pride goes before destruction and the Holy Spirit before fall. I know I haven't said much today, but I said a little bit. I think it's in Proverbs 16, 18. Holy means to make high and higher to lift up on high. It means excellency. Did you hear that? Excellency. If you can't get this thing by being perfect in the flesh, it's got to be in the spiritual. Amen. There's a lot of people that got it together in the, in the Christian church, but it's the flesh. And the flesh profits nothing. I want this thing in the spiritual. says, I have seen this so much since I've been in the ministry, more times than I'd like to count. And without this message, some of us are going to wind up 
either early in the graveyard, in a nursing home, off over here, set aside, when we could be out here, over here, enjoying the Spirit of God, dancing and shouting and praising God and getting the Word of God. I don't want to miss out on what God's got. Well, I just don't believe that God works that way in the New Testament dispensation. I believe the book too, Reverend. Have you? Have you read the next five? Well, Ananias lied about his money and kept back part of the price. Have you kept back part of your tithe? You notice how quiet it got then? <laughs> I think I ought to look at the offer now and see how we're doing. Everybody was just thinking. No, we haven't. No, I know, I know it's low. Am I right? Is it low? Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew it. Or he knew it. Because somebody may have kept that part of the price. What happened to Adam and well, This is in the New Testament. <clears throat> They carried him out feet first. His wife come in and lied also. And what did they do to her? Carried her out. You got cooked. One time Peter told his mother, said, you're in the gall of bitterness. Let me tell you something. Bitterness will kill you. The Bible talks about a root of bitterness, root of bitterness springing up in Hebrews, springing up and defiling many. And Esau was in a root of bitterness that he was defiled. We might be holier than that. We may have it all down together. But if we allow bitterness and green gall and envy and jealousy get in there, we're going to wind up somewhere where we don't want to be. I want to stay where God's people are. I want to stay in the presence of God. If you've got to roll me in, i got to crawl in. I swear this is where I want to be. There is no doubt a spirit called perfectionism. If, if there's not a word, I just made it up. Spirit of perfectionism. Can you write that down, sister? Spirit of perfectionism and put it on the tape. If it isn't, I call it a new word. Apostle Paul said, I am the best in the West. Now he said, I'm the chiefest of sinners. He also said, I didn't come behind any apostle either. How about that one? Until we acknowledge our sins, there can be no deliverance from this spirit. Proverbs 29, 1 said, He is often reproved, and hard in his neck is destroyed in that without remedy. We can think we are perfect specimen all we want to. The fact is, our flesh is not perfect, and when, and I want to bring this out further tonight, see, tonight I want to just draw a line right down the middle. Perfection of the flesh and perfection of the spirit. Show the difference. It's in the Bible. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm doing tonight. God's going to have us humble and cut out the spiritual cancer of pride or remove us from this ministry. That's right. Oh! Thank you. That's a spirit bearing witness. You never heard that before? You'll hear it here. We have a choice to make and life is full of choices and we have to choose our choices and determine how we're going to uh, how we choose is how we're going to def and wind up. Isaiah 7.15 says, Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. I don't want to wind up like Saul. I don't want to wind up like Nebuchadnezzar or somebody. I want to wind up like Samuel, who didn't let any of the words of God fall to the ground. I didn't tell you much because there's so much to tell. But I'm in love with God. I love Mount Zion. You folks are there by gift. 
And anyone that comes in to this ministry and lays hold of this, God's going to take them quickly to Mount Zion. There is a joy there. There's gladness there. There's singing there. There is... It's all there. Folks, read about Jerusalem and the joy that they had and the glory that they had. But they don't have it anymore. God's given it over to a Gentile. Do you want to be in the bride? Head to Mount Zion. You know where the 144,000 stand in Revelation 14? Not on, the, not on the bottom of Mount Zion. On the top of Mount Zion. All it takes to remain there is humility. All it takes to remain there is a cross. All it takes to remain there is to humble ourselves from our pride and rebellion. Is that good? Amen. Is that simple? Yes. Amen. The perfection of the flesh will not mount to a hill of age. We can have it all down. How to walk, how to talk. And God may just decide you might fly on the wings of an eagle. Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody shout. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God.